What's up, everybody? Eric here from History Awesome. Uh, you're all kind of wondering, damn, Eric, I thought you were dead. You haven't posted in forever. Well, sorry about that. School has been loco, very crazy. Um, so I've been doing that for the entire time since I last posted the Outlander video. Um, but luckily, good for all you guys. Um, I will be posting more stuff. I've been working some stuff during uh, between school stuff and things like that. So there will be more things published like in December when school's all done and I can focus on YouTube again. Um, but yeah, but today, the reason why I'm coming on to, for this video is we're actually going to go see Napoleon. Uh, yes, Napoleon is being released tonight to the public. And uh, me and Daniel, uh, if you guys remember Daniel, he helped me make the Napoleon reaction trailer. Uh, yeah, so we're going to go and see the film together um, in a very good, solid theater. And yeah, do a little swipe vlog. Daniel may be bringing a costume, if you can find it, uh, to the event. Uh, and yeah, so we're just going to go out, hang out, chill out. And then at the end of the video, we will then give our kind of first thoughts of the video and things like that. So yeah, I'm going to actually go get ready right now and go head outside to the movie theater. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay. Oh, okay. So we just arrived at the theater. Oh, let's get out. It is really, really dark. Uh, you can't see me right now, but uh, nice and cool in the Florida weather. So right now I'm going to park this car right here and then see Daniel in a bit. So, yeah. Yep. What's up, mate? <laughs> How are you doing? Oh, look at the drip. Oh, the drip. Oh, I love it. I love it. Ready to watch the film? How are you feeling? So Nervous. Far? Nervous? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've been kind of, we haven't really done any, like, watched the reviews or anything like that, so we're kind of coming in fresh, but some of the news stories have been coming out. The interviews stuff. with Ridley Scott are not fun. No, no, no. So, yeah, so, yeah, right now we're probably going to get some food, get into the theater, and then after we'll uh, do a slight little, like, first reaction. We deep won't, yeah. we won't do We won't go deep, yeah, yeah, yeah. but we'll do a free brief. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go and uh, get some food right now, go to the theater, and I'll see you guys in a bit. Peace. So, these, these are the seats. Laughter, Got Daniel over here, hope. hoping Key they didn't waste two hours. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm just gonna have a good time watching Napoleon, and uh, yeah, that's kind of fun. Like that, yeah. I'm gonna go in my fresh and have an awesome movie experience <laughs> and Thanksgiving or begin Thanksgiving break. But uh, yeah, so we'll see the movie here a little bit, and I'll talk to you guys later. Two hours later. Okay, guys, so we literally just walked out of the movie theater. Yep. Um, I guess let's just start off. Um, <sighs> Here's my, my very, very quick review. I think it meets the legal definition of libel. It's not good at all. No. It's not good at all. No. I think... It doesn't work... It, yes, we're historians. Obviously, we're going to quibble about the historical stuff. It doesn't even work as a movie. Like, even yeah. on its own terms. If you take away all the names, say it's some random person, yeah. it's, still, it's still not a great movie. <laughs> I think for me, I think the movie sh doesn't really have one focal point. Mm -mm. It's just jumping in different a lot of places. I think, like we said in the um, review, I think the narrative is Josephine, but like Josephine, like that focus just just goes away and yeah. comes back. Like it doesn't stay with. Josephine I would at actually all. be on board with this movie entirely being yes. just Napoleon and Josephine because you know what? The one, the one thing that I will say I was blown away by that I genuinely liked was Vanessa Kirby as Josephine. Yeah, I sure. think she was the only. I didn't even like Joaquin Phoenix as Napoleon, yeah. and I like I like him as an actor. I don't think he did a good job as Napoleon. Yeah, I think for me the problem was was that it tried to do way too much. Yeah. Like, it tried to be, a, like, political, it tried to be military, it tried to be, like, Josephine and Napoleon's uh, relationship. This movie implies, not, it, it almost outright states that three major events, military events, only happen because Napoleon wants to be with Josephine. Yeah, it's basically because he was horny. That's basically yeah. what, that basically, yeah. like, decides... It's like, almost the exact text of the movie. It's everything but outright stated. He left Egypt because he found out Josephine was cheated. No, of course, nothing had to do with the fact that the invasion was already failing. He was hearing about... No, 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 no. It was just about, I'm mad that Josephine cheated on me. I think, for me, I think what it probably made the film better... Spoiler alert, but this is, you know, it's supposedly history, but... <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, you know, I think, well, even, like, just in that, like, we... I laugh, like, half the time of mm -hmm. how ridiculous this, some mm -hmm. of this stuff was. Mm -hmm. Like, I was just like, wow, that's just so bad. I was prepared to be like to quibble. I'm I'm a historian. I'll always notice the little details. As a moviegoer, as someone who enjoys film, I am okay with the film not being historically perfectly accurate. Yeah. This movie 
and the first third was wrong but enjoyable it was like yeah. okay you know what you made some choices i disagree with them mm -hmm. but you're going somewhere with it yeah after about a third of the way through it is just takes this wild ass turn that is just wrong it's not enjoyable historian doesn't work as a movie and it is just infuriating it's genuinely maddening I'm, this is the first time in a long time i've walked out of the theater mad yeah i think for me i think there's something you can work with mm -hmm. in that film but you just literally have to pick a lane mm -hmm. like pick a lane and stay with it mm -hmm. because for me like i got half i could confuse like halfway through like what is the point of this film mm -hmm. like what yeah. is the plot like what who, are, who is this for yeah because it's not for the military guys because you trash the military history it's like anyone who has picked up one book on napoleon will tell you no that is not what happened so it's not for those it's not for us kind of nerds if you're going for people who are into like the cultural kind of history no it is fucking wrong there and i can tell like ridley scott in this movie is not subtle. nothing about this movie is subtle i can tell that what he wants to do is he wants to show napoleon as weirdly strong and pathetic at the same time he wants him to be convinced arrogant megalomaniacal all of that while also being like attached to the hip desperate for josephine's attention i get that's what he wants it to to do he fails to do that because it like at the same time he has napoleon be rough and abusive towards josephine and at the other time he's like he will do whatever josephine wants and that's not even a, a matter of like, oh, as human beings, we have contra contradictions. No, it's just like as a movie, in one scene, he's an abusive monster. In the other, he does what, whatever the hell Josephine wants. It, it makes no sense. Yeah, I even think like just for me, like I can, uh, like, I think Dan was talking about this before. Like I can take like, like, like minor historical yeah. inaccuracies. Like, I can take that. Like that's like, I know like a movie can't cover everything. I know like every movie is like multiple people in art, right? Like, they have, like, their own interpretations, yeah. like, how I want to portray it. But they don't even, like, do that right. No. Like, I can't even get, like, oh, what is something I'm supposed to get from Napoleon? I just get so many mixed messages mm -hmm. of what's going on. I just, my head just gets, like... Is he a genius or is he lucky? Is he this this monster who wants to control everything or is he a it, it does not know what he wants to do ridley scott i think read one book full of totally historical inaccuracies inaccuracies heard these like 200 year old rumors about napoleon thought hey that's cool let me make a movie about it and just like did nothing when he heard hey listen no that's not really what happened he t it's like you can tell there are scenes he wanted to make mm -hmm. he wanted to have him be you know um there's no other word for it. Napoleon is a cuck for Josephine in this movie. And I'm using that term explicitly because that's how he is portrayed in the movie. Mm -hmm. All the term, all the, you know, words that go with it. He has, he heard about the ice at Austerlitz and he makes up the entire battle. Mm -hmm. He heard about the, the charge at Waterloo about how, you know, it was futile and everything. And he makes that the entire battle. He heard about Alexander going to visit Josephine. And that's the reason why he leaves Elba to, to go meet with Josephine. It's, it's, it's maddening. Yeah. And I think just to kind of, because we've, well, actually, five minutes was actually not that bad. Um, I think. Well, I could talk for much longer. <laughs> oh, no. We, so this will definitely be like a lot, much longer. So yeah. just kind of like our first yeah. impressions of the film and stuff like that. And I think in, in that video, we'll also talk about like what are some ways in which you can actually make a good Napoleon yeah. film yeah. based off like what he has on the plate and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, but I think the funny thing I, we were talking about before, we were just talking about texting about like all the different things that really Scott was saying about historians. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Pretty much like, wait, were you there, mate? No? Then shut the fuck up then. Actual quote from Ridley Scott. Look it up. Yeah, or like that historians only use, um, what's it called? Not imagination mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for like all of their stuff. Yeah. Here's the thing though. Like historians, we create narratives. Like we have, we're story tours in our own right. The difference between us and someone who's like an artist like that, we have to pull our information from things that happen and yeah. things that happen are... We have to justify our narratives. Yeah. We have primary sources that back that say this is the way in which we're going to tell mm -hmm. our history. And with us, like, we have to decide and choose, like, decisions, like, what we're going to focus on. Like, we're, we're storytellers and narratives in our own right light. So, like, I guess what I'm trying to say is that, like, Ridley Scott can't even do that right. No. And he's coming at us so that we don't, like, know what we're doing and stuff like that. He, I totally agree with Eric. You can't decide on what narrative. The movie can't decide what it thinks about Napoleon. Joaquin Phoenix can't decide how to act Napoleon or however he was directed to play it. It's... <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the movie wants to create a very specific narrative. Okay, good for you. You want to portray Napoleon as this evil guy? I'm not inherently against that. I would say it's unoriginal. I'd say it's been done to death. This whole idea of Napoleon as fascist dictator? Yeah, real original Ridley Scott. But whatever. Mm -hmm. You can try to do that. It doesn't manage to do that. Mm -hmm. I, that's why I, I I was kind of like slowly messaging, uh, talking with Eric during the movie. Very quietly, of course. 
the sheer arrogance it takes for Ridley Scott to see the movie like Waterloo, 1970, Dino De Laurentiis, by far one of the best movies about the Napoleonic era, period. It's clear he watched it, because it's, it, it's mind-numbingly clear some of the scenes are inspired by it. Mm -hmm. To watch that and decide that three-hour movie that had 15,000 troops, I can make that movie better in 15 minutes, because the last 15 minutes are basically Waterloo. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't have the budget to make a Waterloo kind of movie. I'm, I won't fault him for that. Don't try to make it then. Stop trying to have these big battles. Yeah. It doesn't work with your budget. Yeah, there's lots of points in the film where I'm just like, yo, he just wasted so much mm -hmm. money on that. Because yeah. I literally, he could have done so much more other things. Yeah. Like, there's the ice scene that you see in the mm -hmm. trailer. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is pretty much, like, what we're talking about there. Like, I told him right when I saw that. That's just, he just wasted a whole bunch of money where he could have used that that money and that, that space yeah. to tell, like, something else about what's going on in the event. I think the, the ice in Australis scene is kind of encapsulates the entire thing. The whole ice thing at Austerlitz, it's a myth. There's reasons for it. It was a myth that was created in 1805, but whatever. Forgetting the fact that there were no Austrian or Russian troops who were drowned because the ice cracked under them. Let's pretend for a moment there were. Hmm. There are moments in that scene in Austerlitz that actually are visually powerful. Oh, yeah. When the, when the troops are falling through, mm -hmm. it is actually good. Great. But the problem is he has no way of justifying that scene. He... He turns Austerlitz into this weird thing where he convinces the Russians and the Austrians, oh no, where we come attack us, and then ambushes them, which is <laughs> not just not what happens, for one. But even then, yeah. as a battle scene, it's just doesn't work. Also, there's also times where Napoleon's like somehow scouting like he's a mm. fucking Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he, he hides as like multiple times, multiple times and then he dresses like a, as a peasant or something and goes physically to the front lines and has like a scope to, to look at the enemy lines. And, again, dressed as like a, a sheep herder or something. Yeah. Which obviously never happened. Yeah, it's just like, dude, just that fucking mm. one-man army out here. He's a spy going out to, to do reconnaissance himself. Well, like, who's running the army? Like, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> oh shit. Um. Oh, what else? I mean, like, yeah, the movie's just not good. Vanessa Kirby as Josephine. The one point I will give it. Everything else, not worth a watch. Like the action scenes are cool. Like when they're um, showing. Well, I mean, like there's some. I mean, they do show violence in it pretty well. So it's like I, I, that's the one credit I will also give it. A lot of our depictions of musket arrow warfare kind of tends to be a little bit sanitized. Mm. So I do appreciate showing, you know, the blood and guts, but that's all he has. Mm -hmm. he, he, There's nothing innovative about this movie. Yeah. He's rehashing old rumors, mushing them all together, and packaging it as something new. Yeah, I think, like, the specific, like, violence he mm -hmm. shows, I, I, I respect that. I mean, like... The too long scene, I will admit, even though it's not exactly how it happened, I, I think that was an, a genuinely good battle scene. That was too long. That was actually, yeah, a really yeah. good scene and stuff like that. And also, like, the um, part where they're doing the uh, the Wolf of the Grey shot. Yeah. That was, I, a, that was... I, I think you could have developed a bit more. Like, it, it's not just, like, one crowd walked up towards a line of cannon. I think it could have been a little bit more convincing because there's the, some movement and stuff. But anyway. The general, the general concept yeah, I liked. It's yeah. good. It doesn't even... And again, this is, I recognize a part of the problem is budget. It, you cannot make a war movie about Napoleon, about this time period, forgetting Napoleon, any of the armies at this time, and not have to show thousands of people on screen. So I get that con that on a practical level, it's difficult to do. This movie that we're talking about, Dino De Laurentiis, literally had 15,000 Soviet troops as extras. Th that scale is never going to be done again. I can appreciate that. Why are you trying to, to replicate it. again? Yeah. yeah. I mean, he tries to do multiple battles, which is also mm -hmm. the thing. Also, for some different things, the guy who's seen the 18, uh, BBC uh, remake of War and Peace? I haven't, and I actually heard good things about it. It's I'm actually really good. Okay. Like, literally watch that, or yep. 1970. Mm -hmm. watch... Or The Duelist. It breaks my heart that the guy who made this piece of shit is the same one who made The Duelist, one of my all-time favorite movies, and one that I think actually approaches the history of the era in a very nuanced way. He... Like, that movie do isn't Napoleon propaganda. It very much shows how different people view him as uh, as a hero and as a genocidal dictator. That movie, which is from 1970 or 72, I forget the exact year, but it's in the 70s, yeah. actually has a more nuanced approach toward Napoleon than this movie. And it also shows battle scenes better, and it also shows the kind of atmosphere of these kind of martial people. No one in this movie, other than Napoleon and Josephine, actually matters. They're not in the in shot for long enough for us to actually develop any kind of character about them. 
there's too many cast. And I get it, you can't show everyone, but there's no attempt to develop anyone other than these two. And these two are developed in a bad way, except for Josephine. I actually, again, the one thing I will say, she as an actress does a really good job of portraying a kind of woman who is trapped in a position mm -hmm. where she has to exercise power. And to do that, she has to use marriage. She has to use her ability to attract uh, attract someone to her. So it's like, she does that very well. Again, Vanessa Kirby, best thing about this movie. Yeah. I think just to just kind of end it, because we can talk about it for <laughs> very hours. Much, very like much, that. yeah. <laughs> um, the movie fails to like any show any type of historical accuracy mm -hmm. on any level. Yep. I mean, uh, Ridley Scott can't decide what narrative he wants to choose. Mm -hmm. And I think that's basically off the fact that he does such a long time period of Napoleon. Like, you just jump from different places and places, and you're just like, where am I going? Yeah. And I think if Ridley Scott were watching this, first off, I kind of regret saying piece of shit. Even though it's how I feel, it's a little bit too mean. I get that he would probably say in his defense, Napoleon is complicated. He is not just someone who's like a megalomaniacal, you know, dictator. He also has depth. I can appreciate that's what he was trying to do. Doesn't work. It, it, it's like a, uh, an on and off switch. One scene, Joaquin Phoenix has to be portraying Napoleon a certain way. The next scene, he's another. It's It, it doesn't work. There's no consistency there. Yeah. And as someone who likes Joaquin Phoenix, this is not his best role. And uh, something I also noticed, and I think this has more to do with just, like, casting. Joaquin Phoenix is is pushing it. He's 50. So towards the end of the movie, he looks great as Napoleon. I will say, like, m later in his life, he looks great. He's not convincing as, like, a 20-year-old Napoleon at too long. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So and it's nothing against Joaquin Phoenix. I get it. You know, it's, it's hard to de-age someone. But still, it, it's okay to cast multiple people as a person at different points in their life. You don't have to have Joaquin Phoenix as Napoleon from day one. Yeah, man, she, uh, yeah, man, she, uh, she chose a lane. We chose a lane, I think the movie went a lot better. <laughs> but uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed our brief discussion. We will definitely have a much longer discussion on Napoleon if this yeah. was maybe too long already. <laughs> um, but hopefully you guys enjoy the content. There will definitely be more stuff uh, being recorded on the channel, which will hopefully be done after school because school will be crazy. Yeah, absolutely. So Keep your eyes out on the channel. Yeah, so see you guys later and peace out. Bye-bye. See you guys.